Hello everyone, and today we're going to talk about some of my favorite Irish songs and activities that we do with them that are extra perfect for St. Patrick's Day. Although, again, you could use them any time of the year. Now, side note, before we get started, I would love to know in the comments, is St. Patrick's Day a big deal where you live or not? I live in Savannah, Georgia, which has one of the biggest St. Patrick's Day celebrations in the US and even in the world. We're not doing St. Patrick's Day this year because of COVID and we didn't last year because of COVID, but before that we were usually at number three in the nation and pretty high up there in the whole world. So I'm curious, let me know down below just before we get started. Let's get started. So my first one is Tell Me Ma. I Love this song. By the way, this is Tell Me Ma, like my ma, not like Tell Me Ma, which is, I live in the South, so my kids always are like, Tell Me Ma, and I'm like, no, 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 Tell My Ma, Tell Me Me Ma. So this song goes, Tell my ma when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. They pull my hair and they stole my comb, but that's all right till I get home. She is handsome, she is pretty, she is the belle of Belfast City. She is courting one, two, three, Please come and tell me who is she. I love this song with like second and third grade. It is so much fun and we usually use this to work on form. So we talk about the difference between verse, chorus, introduction, interlude, all of those good things. The way that I like to do this is I'll teach them the words to the chorus, which are the parts that I just sang. And we'll usually add a couple of actions. So just little things like, they pull my hair and they stole my comb, but that's all right till I get home. Um, and then of course when it says she is Corden, one, two, three, then we'll count those out and stuff like that. We also have to talk about the vocabulary because sometimes we think it's funny that it says she is handsome or we have to talk about what a bell is and Belfast city. We look at that on the map and especially Corden because that's another one that my kids will say, she is important, one, two, three. I'm like, no, 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 she is Corton, Corton, like dating. And so those things are really important to go through. Then after they learn the chorus, then we will do some kind of actions. One easy way I like to do this is that we'll all get hand drums and we'll go in a circle and keep the beat, except when you hear the chorus and at the chorus, you stop and you sing the chorus. So we walk around and keep the beat. And then when you hear the chorus, you stop, you sing, and then you go back to it. This is kind of the easy way to figure out like, okay, verse and not verse. And then after that, we assign different actions to each one. So I'll just write on the board introduction, you know, verse A, um, chorus, verse one, and different things. And I have them come up with different actions we can do. You can do study beat actions or just whatever you want. And so they'll say, you know, I'm like, all right, what should we do for the first part? And they're like, oh, we'll tap our heads. I'm like, great. And what should we do for verse one? Oh, we'll tap our shoulders. Like, oh, great. And so we'll go through the song and do all the different things that they came up with. And then after that, we'll talk about, you know, what's a verse, what's a chorus, and all those different things so that they can get that vocabulary piece in. This song is one of my absolute favorites, so I highly, highly recommend it. Although I think I say that about like all of the songs. Oops. All right, the next one is the one you're all thinking of and that is Cockles and Muscles or Molly Malone. Now with this one, I like to introduce it with pictures of cockles and muscles and we'll talk first about seafood and like what kind of seafood do you eat? And we'll talk about what a cockle is and what a muscle is because my kids are like, have no idea, which is funny because we live on the coast. So like we eat a lot of seafood and then we'll sing the song and we talk about how she's a fishmonger and what that means and all the vocabulary that goes in with that. But anyway, the song goes, In Dumplin's fair city, where the girls are so pretty, I first laid my eyes on sweet Molly Malone. She wheeled her wheelbarrow through streets far and narrow, crying cockles and muscles, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, crying cockles and muscles, alive, alive, oh. Now there's a couple of different things that you can do with this and a couple of different ways we have done in the past. One thing I like to do, especially with like third grade is we'll sing this song. We'll talk about a fishmonger and how that's someone who like goes around and they, you know, sell fish off of a cart. And then we've used castanets um, and I'll have one person who gets to pass out all the castanets and then we'll keep the beat and they look kind of like a muscle. So it works perfectly. It will either keep the beat or play the rhythm. So that's option number one. Option number two is that you can do it kind of as a sing along where you teach the chorus and then you sing the verses. And after each verse, you can talk about the story and what's happening. So this is a really great way to show kids that songs can tell a story. You could even have them draw pictures of each of the different 
portions of the story as they go through and then again they can all join in on that part that would be a really fun way to just that would be a really fun and like raw authentic way to just you know play a guitar or an ukulele and sing this song option number three is one thing i'm going to try this year so i can't guarantee it's going to work but we shall see my fourth graders have been working on eighth dotted quarter and dotted quarter eighth and this song has both of those so one thing we're going to do is i'm going to give them an activity with all the rhythms and we're going to determine is it eighth dotted quarter or is it dotted quarter eight so all of those will be missing and they have to drag the correct answer on a google slide sheet over there i meant to mention this at the beginning but almost everything that is in this video plus a little bit of extra stuff is also in my virtual field trip to ireland so this is a google slides resource that goes through a whole bunch of different songs teaches different concepts we learn about the instruments of ireland about ireland we it's got videos and pictures and all sorts of great things so if you're interested in that definitely click the link below and all of the graphics you're seeing on the screen are from this and again there's a bunch more <laughs> One more thing on Molly Malone, and that is that I found a video from a group, I think it's called Possibly Irish. I want to say it's called Possibly Irish, but I will link below. And they kind of act out the song, and you can also see the instruments they're using. So it's really cool because especially if you're going that story route and want to like talk about the story of Molly Malone, you can see it unfold in front of you, and it's pretty quick, and it's a YouTube video. So I will leave that link below if I remember all these links. While we're on it, I do like to show the kids that different instruments that are important in Ireland, such as the Celtic harp, the penny whistle, the concertina, concertina, I'm not sure how you say that, but it kind of looks like an accordion, um, the different kinds of flutes, the bagpipes, the bodron, which is a drum that looks like a hand drum but it's a little bit different and then it's played with a stick that's a really fun one because it looks like your hand drums that you probably already have in your class so you can use the hand drums and talk about it and all of those different things and then of course the fiddle because we gotta have the fiddle there's other instruments that are used in irish music but those are kind of like the traditional ones i can go on and on and on about irish songs but i'm gonna end with the one that's like i feel like the big one is this a big one Danny Boy. <laughs> if you don't know Danny Boy, you should. Oi, oh, Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the roses calling. Tis you, tis you. So that's a little bit of Danny Boy. This is another good one to kind of talk about the story the, behind the song. It's also just really pretty. I like to talk about the mood. I um, This is also a good one for fourth grade. At the beginning of the year, I used the song Johnny Has Gone for a Soldier, which I feel like is a very similar style to this song. And also, I want to say originated in Ireland but I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me. Good to tell a story, you can have the kids draw a picture, you can ask them what it reminds them of, you can teach them the song, all those good things. You can also talk about phrasing. One thing I like to do for phrasing is to take scarves and do arcs above so you can kind of show the different phrases all throughout the song like i mentioned there are a bunch of other songs that i could include so fun fact my husband is obsessed with irish folk music and listens to it about 90 percent of the time in the car so i know a lot of irish songs and his favorite currently in case anyone was curious is an irishman in paris which is not school appropriate but is amazing and if you have not ever heard that definitely look it up it's great an irishman in paris hilarious all right so i'm gonna leave the songs there there's a million more songs that i could talk about that i love and that we use but this video needs to end at some point so we will move on if you have a favorite song and then let me know what that is down below other options for this are include irish dancing so irish dancing is so much fun and something i feel like we should always do and i am not going to teach you how to irish dance because i know nothing but i will leave some links to some youtube videos that we have used in the past down below so that you can check those out and see what they are most of them i would say are best for upper grades because there's a lot of footwork going on but you could do it with younger kids even if you don't want to teach irish dancing i always love to show irish dancing i always love to show videos of river dance because 
they're amazing i went saw them in concert and it was like the best thing ever. also because i know that in riverdance there's gonna be men in it and i always try to make a point to make sure that we have both girls and guys represented in any dance videos or i try to do any videos but especially for dance videos so that the kids aren't like oh that's just for girls because it's not now let's wrap it up with a couple of different books for Irish or especially for St. Patrick's Day. So these are a little more St. Patrick's Day y than the other ones are. The first one is Fiona's Luck. This is the one I just picked up. It is super cute. We're using it with third grade. I forgot to bring my books home, but I will pop a big picture so you can see what it looks like. And it's a story about a little girl who gets all the luck and it has leprechauns, but it's not that like neon green St. Patrick's Sea kind of looking thing. One that is, however, is How to Catch a Leprechaun. This one is hilarious, a little better for the younger kids, but super cute. And lastly, I love all the old lady who swallowed anything books, and there's one where she swallows a shamrock, so that is perfect for like your little littles, kindergarten, first grade, maybe even second grade maybe even third grade <laughs> they still enjoy them even though they're a little bit little kiddish at that point and so that's a really great option as well so those are a couple of books if you're looking for more information about like saint patrick the person i do have both a printable and a google slides version of some saint patrick's activities that talk about saint patrick they're not from a musical perspective it's actually something that i made it for my church kids so it's a biblical perspective but if you're looking to like teach the kids a little bit more about who saint patrick's is why we celebrate St. Patrick's Day, you can check that out. All right, friends, so those are a few of my favorite Irish songs and activities and things that we do. All of the songs that we talked about today, plus some more, are included in my virtual field trip to Ireland. We also have all of the instruments that we talked about. It has videos of each of the instruments that we talked about. It talks about Ireland. We talk about Irish dancing and all of those great things that we talked about today and more. So if you are interested in that, I will leave it linked down below. I will also link the books down below and the St. Patrick's Day activity and just all the things, all the links, all the links down below. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you hit like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time for more elementary music teacher lesson ideas and yeah, have a wonderful, wonderful week.